In this video, we will address some fundamental concepts to understand about thermostats, with the hope that by better understanding these concepts, the Vantage Equinox Comfort Widget will be more useful to you. Now, unless otherwise stated, we'll be discussing conventional heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, or HVAC systems. First, let's discuss the role of the thermostat. There are three basic functions of the thermostat. The first is to sense the local temperature. But sometimes that sensor may not be built into the thermostat, but may, may be an external sensor that is wired back to the thermostat, allowing us to mount it out of sight so that the sensor is installed there in the normal place the thermostat usually is, which this reduces our wall clutter. If the thermostat is sensing temperature across a large space, there may be multiple of these sensors placed throughout to provide an averaging of temperatures across that space. The second purpose of the thermostat is relays. Normally in the open position, these close that send a signal to the system controller to operate the heat, to operate the cool, and to operate the fan. The system controller will respond to these signals according to the system capabilities and, and setup. The third point is the or purpose is the display, which is our user interface. Now this, of course, may be substituted by a, an advantage system by Equinox in-wall or mobile device. The user can see the current temperature, he can view and adjust set points, he can change operation modes. We'll explain what these operation modes and set points are in more detail. When we mentioned a set point, what is a set point? A set point is defined as an adjustable threshold temperature that, when reached, will cause the thermostat to signal an action to the thermostat. As a user, we can set these values according to needs and preferences. There are typically two set points for a thermostat, one for heating and one for cooling. If the measured temperature falls below the heat set point, the, temperature, the thermostat will signal the system to heat, and it will continue to call for heat until the temperature rises to the set point, at which point the call for heat ends so that the temperature doesn't continue to rise above that desired set point temperature. Likewise, if the temperature rises above the cool set point, the thermostat will signal the, signal, signal the system to cool and will continue to call for cooling until the temperature falls to the set point. When the temperature reaches the set point, we say the call is satisfied and the relay releases. Now, there typically may be a delay from the moment the set point temperature is reached before the thermostat ends its call so as to avoid frequent equipment cycling. For the same reason, when the set point temperature is reached, there may be a delay before the thermostat calls for action. A heat set point will always be lower than a cool set point. Otherwise, there would be a temperature range in which heating and cooling are both required. In fact, many thermostats enforce a minimum separation between these set points, sometimes fixed and sometimes variable, typically two to three degrees difference that keeps us from setting the heat and cool set points too close. This is a system safety feature known as dead band. It is designed to reduce equipment on-off cycling between heating and cooling. Not only would that be wasteful of energy, but would cause undesirable wear on the equipment. So, if you lower the cool set point and see that it pushes the heat set point with it, or vice versa, this is the reason. Let's talk about operation modes. And then we'll give some practical examples of setting mode and set points. Simply stated, an operation mode defines what the thermostat can signal the HVAC system to do. The four modes are heat, cool, auto, and off. The heat mode allows the thermostat to signal a need for heat when the heat set point is reached, but the thermostat cannot call for heat cooling, no matter what the set point may be and how warm it may get. The cool mode allows the thermostat to cool, call for cool, but not to call for heat. In the auto mode, we have the ability to call for either a, a heat or a cool, uh, depending on the set points that uh, are for heating and cooling when those temperatures are reached. When the set point operation mode is off, the thermostat can neither call for heat nor cool. So no matter how hot or cold it may get, 
Now, usually we don't turn the operation mode off for normal operation because it's like having no system at all. Of course, that would be the most energy efficient mode, but doesn't do anything for our comfort. Think of the auto mode as something as a set it and forget it mode, where we limit the range of temperatures in the condition space to stay within the range defined by the set points. For example, if the heat set point is at 68 and the cool set point is at 73, the system is going to work to keep the temperature within those bounds. This is commonly used mode because it doesn't limit, it does limit both extremes and allows us to set an acceptable band of temperature for the space which band may, of course, be modified based on time of day, occupancy, and other factors. In the winter, when we typically only need heating, our tolerance for lower temperatures works well with the lower heat set point. Our tolerance for slightly warmer temperatures in summer, when we only need cooling, works well with the higher cool set point. So that it, uh, it may be that we don't have to adjust our settings for seasonal changes, though, of course, this is not always going to be true for everyone. So when or why would we only use heat or only use cool modes? If we are in the winter and never expect the cooling to be needed, the heat mode will produce the same results as the auto mode, where the cool set point is set sufficiently high so as to assure the air conditioner never runs. The typical reason to really apply a heat only or a cool only mode is when we're in a transitional season, particularly in regions where there's a wide temperature um, fluctuation. Like here in the high desert of Utah, where a 30 degree temperature variation is not unheard of. When we have a wide daily temperature swing, it's highly likely that both the heating and the cooling are going to run the same day if we select the auto mode, which to many is going to seem wasteful. To save energy, we might leave it in heating mode to get the home comfortable in the morning and then circulate in air from the outside later in the day to cool naturally instead of having competing forces working against each other, which we then would pay for. So now that we've reviewed the operation modes and set point, let's talk about how you might think of set points. You might in some context think of them as a target temperature at which you want to maintain the space. This is particularly true when we're in uh, only one system mode like heat or cool. Um, but in other contexts, particularly true when the space is unoccupied, we're going to think of these two set points then as defining the acceptable temperature band limits. Another topic related to the thermostat is that of fan operation, which requires some clarification. Typically, a thermostat will have two fan modes, on and auto. Normally, we might think that those modes would be on and off, but there is a subtle distinction. When we set the mode to auto, we're telling the thermostat to stay out of the question of when the fan turns on and let the system that it communicates with decide when to operate the fan. This is why this mode is referred to as auto. With respect to the thermostat, it is now an automatic mode. We never tell the system to not run the fan, so there's not an off mode. But we might want to be able to run the fan to circulate air, and since the thermostat is our human interface to the system, we do so by putting the fan mode to on on the thermostat, causing the thermostat to close a relay to communicate to the system that no matter what it might be doing, the fan should be running. When we no longer want to force that circulation, we set the fan mode back to auto. Now let's talk about thermostat schedules, what they are and why you would use them. A thermostat schedule allows you to prescribe set points throughout the day, which typically will vary by period of the day. The general idea is to be comfortable when we occupy a space, but allow for energy saving setbacks when the space is unoccupied. Even when we occupy a space, the ideal temperature might change throughout a 24 hour period. A notable example of this is in the bedroom, where typically we like the temperature to be cooler while we sleep than when we're awake. Now, this objective is consistent with energy savings during the heating season, but conflicts with energy saving during the cooling season. And we might take into account that difference when we set our night period settings for bedroom thermostats, perhaps compromising between comfort and energy objectives in the cooling season. When an area is not occupied for a period of four hours or more, you may save energy by applying a setback. A setback is nothing more than a relaxation of the heating and or cooling requirement. 
It is a lowering of the heat set point from your comfort setting and a raising of the cool set point. If in auto mode, basically we are widening the acceptable band of temperature in order to save energy. Traditional thermostat scheduling is based on four periods known as night, morning, day, and evening. The user can adjust the beginning of each period, which by default defines the end of the previous period. The user can also adjust the set points for each period to meet the comfort and or energy saving objectives for the space during those four periods. One of the reasons why schedules are valuable is the concept of anticipation. Now, all HVAC systems have some inertia, meaning that they take some time for the temperature to change once the system starts operating in either cool or heat. Some systems have more inertia than others. For example, radiant in-floor heating has typically a much higher inertia than a forced air system. So, changing the temperature takes more time with the in-floor heating system than does the forced air. Without using schedules, we could certainly change set points upon leaving the home and upon arrival, but because of the inertia of the system, there's a delay before we reach our comfort level. The concept of anticipation is that we can schedule a set point to change before the time when we get home or before a time that we want the temperature to be warmer. The schedule allows us to set the beginning of a period to an earlier time than when we want the change to happen in order to anticipate the time it takes to get to where we want it to be. Now, if you live in an area where time of day electricity rates apply, typically the peak period is in the afternoon, particularly in the summer. And you might consider that your air cost savings might be improved if you begin cooling the house earlier in the day by moving up the start of the evening period so as to reduce your peak period energy usage. While a the thermostat is working according to schedule, we have two options to modify the set points. The first is to take the thermostat out of the scheduled operation by changing the manual operation. Then we can adjust the set points as desired and they will remain until our next adjustment. This is known as placing a hold on the schedule. When we're ready to resume, we simply reapply the schedule. Our other option is to apply a temporary override. With this option, we change the set points and tell the thermostat how long to keep those set points as adjusted. And when that time expires, the schedule will resume to what it had been if the override hadn't happened. This concludes our tutorial video. Hopefully, coverage of these concepts makes the content of the Vantage Equinox Comfort Widget videos more meaningful. Have a great day.